Shalom friends, welcome to Daf Reactions, Chagiga 27. Mazel Tov, we have reached the end of the tractate. What a pilgrimage journey it has been. On one hand, Chagiga was absolutely fascinating. We learned about the Merkeva. We went on this emotional journey into the Pardes story. We discovered a useful excuse to getting out of helping your friend move. And all of you learned about my love of Lysol. Yet, on the flip side, I did struggle with the interminable discussions of purity and impurity. Interminable. After all, I'm just an Ama Aretz, you can't really expect that much from me. I will also admit that since Chagiga 4, I have been more than a little afraid of Chad sneaking up behind me. Is he here? So I find it quite fitting that in today's daf, we get some more pro tips about what to expect during the whole Gehenna experience. Now I'll know what happens to me when Chad finally does show up. So the sages are still talking about the purity or impurity of the altar table, and I'm about to lose it and flip a table myself when we get a teaching from Rabbi Elazar to help shake things up a little bit. The fires of Gehenna have no power over Torah scholars. Why? Follow this reasoning. Okay, so just like salamanders are made out of fire, you know this, I know this, everyone knows this, and if you put their blood on you, you then become uh, fireproof yourself. Kolva Homer, all the more so for Torah scholars, because the words of Torah are like fire. So Torah scholars are made of fire, and thus, it's like they got a coating of asbestos circa the 1970s, and now the fires of Gehenna won't touch them. Rach Lakish says, ah, let's take it a step further. Not only that, the fires of Gehenna have no power over even the sinners of Israel. Why? Let's get another metaphor. Just like how the altar has a thin coating of gold and we burn stuff on top of it, but it never catches fire. Kol v'chomer, all the more so. Even people who have sinned are protected from the fires of Gehenna by their good deeds. Firstly, of course, Rach Lakish would say this, but at the same time, I really do appreciate this very encouraging thought. Because contrary to the widespread and very inaccurate belief that Judaism does not have an afterlife with an idea of a heaven and a concept of a hell, it clearly does. At least it's good to know that the more good deeds I do, the more fireproof I will become. Now we can develop an action plan so that when we all get to Gehenna, we'll be there. Yes, it'll suck, but we'll also be there being like, it could be worse. Now that's not the reason to do good deeds, do them anyway, but it is a plus. And on that note, I just want to say mazel tov to everybody who finished the tractate today. This was a tough one. Hadran alach, I will see you in tractate Yivamot. We're gonna have a lot to talk about.